well, 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 y'all, I'm back. Lord willing, Lord willing, I'm here to stay and I'm back officially. Y'all, I just keep popping in and out like I don't have no business being on YouTube, which I probably don't. But the thing of it is, is I'm trying. The Lord is working in me and I can't wait to share how the Lord's working in me. But for now, just know my intentions are to be officially back. It has been such a journey over the last couple of months in so many different ways. A lot of good, but some bad and some really chaotic ways. And today I wanted to share with y'all just some of the things that have been going on. I wanted to give y'all an update about my life a little bit. Mainly, I want to give you an update about my spiritual life and what's been going on and how the Lord has just been working in my life and whatnot. But I did want to briefly touch on what has been going on throughout this summer and kind of let y'all know kind of why I unintentionally step back from YouTube for a little bit. I feel like this is a broken record and this is an episode that y'all have probably seen way too many times. So forgive me for that. But at the same time, I am, I'm confident in the fact that the Lord doesn't waste anything. And so I, as much as I wanted to be down on myself and be like, oh my goodness, how could I do this again? How could I, you know, be inconsistent again? How can... I, I went through all the what ifs and the, you know, the torture and the pain of all of it. And it's like, at the end of the day, the Lord is good and he will do whatever he has to do in order to receive his glory. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's about him and it's not about me. And so it doesn't matter how I look or how I'm perceived outside of the fact that I hopefully I'm not perceived bad, but you know what, that's okay too. <laughs> that's okay. Whatever the Lord has to use. Um, so let me just tell you about the physical or the right now, like what's happening or what's happened. I do plan on making a separate like vlog style video to really show you the full totality of kind of what has transpired around our house. But for now, let me just briefly tell you what's going on or what has gone on. So probably at the kind of beginning of summertime, life just kind of started getting busy for us. Um, of course, the kids were out of school. Uh, we were trying to spend family time together. And also we were wanting to serve in our local church. Therefore, a lot transpired with that. With me being a content creator, I felt the need to pursue helping out my local church with some things. And I just love the local church. And I just wanted to use my gifts that the Lord has given me and use them for his glory and for his church. And so it might not seem like a lot, but I decided to go help with the youth group and stuff like that. And so I was recording videos for them and between that and then we were recording for VBS and it was just like back to back to back days of just good, wonderful, amazing worship. I'm going to put it like that. Um, and so it was just a lot, a lot that I didn't realize. There were some days where I barely got any sleep. Like, I'm not joking, like two hours of sleep. I am too grown for all of that. I am too grown. And then fast forward a little bit, we have gotten more, we've added more animals to our homestead. And we've debated whether we're going to subtract animals from our homestead. That's been a whole thing, a uh, process. And um, just that season of life just changing and not realizing what all is incorporated in having a homestead really because sometimes you think it is gonna be so easy and let me tell y'all the people on Instagram y'all be making it look real cute and real easy but um that it ain't all that sometimes. Um, I didn't realize, I mean, I knew it was going to be work, you know, but I think you don't realize how much work is going to be put into something until you do it yourself. Then on top of all of that, uh, my husband broke his leg, 
not just his leg, but his ankle. He ended up having to have surgery and that has been crazy. So he has been home and the Lord is working through that and just allowing and using that for his glory because there's just so much within that. That in itself is a testimony. Right now, I'm just grateful that the Lord has given us time together. I think that in a lot of ways, I think that the Lord is calling my husband to come home. Um, and if not, it is just really utilizing this time that we do have with him and um, making sure that it's for God's glory. So yeah, the Lord is just kind of transforming my life right now. And I'm kind of here for it. And I'm kind of not but you know, I'm just taking it in stride and hoping. Uh, honestly, I'm just hoping for the best. I'm hoping that the Lord just uses uses me. That's kind of where I'm at. Like I said, I'll make a longer video and a vlog style video of what's really been going on because I do have footage of everything that has been taking place. Not everything, but most of it. I just never posted it because it was just so all over the place. There was just so much that I felt like I wanted to explain. And um, that's just not how my brain works. I feel like I need to explain myself. I feel like I need to show what's going on because for me, I don't know what it is, but I just feel like I need y'all to know all of the things so that you can get the full context and be like, oh, okay, I understand now why that happened or, you know, whatever, whatever. That's just the people pleaser in me, I think. I don't know. But what I really wanted to touch on today and what I really wanted to talk about was just this season of life that I am in right now. Um, I, I'll be honest with y'all. I was back and forth whether I should make this video mainly because I didn't want to just get on here and always just come back and have this like horror story type situation. I didn't want y'all to be like, oh my goodness, every time she gets on here, she comes back. She's, she's gone through all of this stuff and all of these things. But I think the point of the reason that the Lord put me on this platform was to share all of those things and to show the roller coaster of a ride that the Christian walk really is and to show that I still struggle. I'm going to continue to struggle until I'm in the presence of my Savior. And I think that there's an importance of a testimony and a continued testimony because sometimes we showcase our lives in such a way that is so prim and proper and perfect and we want to just only show that you know or people want to get on here and just preach and teach from this perspective of like they have it all figured out and I don't have it all figured out I I honestly right now what the Lord is showing me and teaching me too is you're not going to have it figured out. The moment you think you have it figured out, I'm going to come in there and show you you don't have it figured out. And I think the importance of this video is to bring a lot to that, to um, showcase the fact that even when you're discouraged, even when you think that the Lord can't use it or that he's not going to keep using you, or that you shouldn't continue on pursuing the task that he has set before you to keep going. I'm a prime example of keep going, keep striving, keep pulling through, keep enduring. Because <clears throat> I think the enemy kept me and was trying to keep me or show me or try to tell me or try to teach me a way that the Lord had never intended for me to be taught. And um, so often I was speaking lies, not only to myself, but to others because I was in a bad place or because I was feeling some type of way. I was taking it out on a lot of other people. 
and some intentionally and some unintentionally. And so um, I just wanted to kind of talk about that today and let y'all know kind of where I'm at and what I feel that the Lord is just calling me to continue to do, which is to share his life. This is his life. My life is his life. And I don't get to dictate what I want to say or what I don't want to say. That's not up to me. Um, That's up to him. And I need to put a voice to some of these thoughts and some of these concerns and some of these struggles because there are probably people who feel the same way, who need the encouragement. And I'm hoping that you will see from this video that this is an encouragement. This isn't to put a damper or to make you feel worse, but this is to encourage you and to lift your spirits if you are in that rut, if you're in that place. So um, the insecurity in me was really just like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I'm here again. I cannot believe I'm making this video again. I can't believe I'm saying and repeating these same struggles over and over and over again. Mainly the struggle of my marriage, mainly the struggle of my disobedience, my inability to succeed or or look successful rather because I think success looks different and I think that our expectation of success is not what success really looks like when you're in Christ always I think that what my perspective of success look like is I'm not going to keep having these same struggles over and over and over that seven years in I should not look like day one which that is such a lie from the enemy it's crazy because yes we can fall into the same temptations but the Lord has brought us out of it over and over again so we aren't at day one I think I got so down on myself and so just inside myself that I was accepting defeat and so with that exception of defeat what I was doing was creating more insecurity creating more sinful thoughts I wasn't taking anything captive I was just releasing it to the enemy and trying to get back good and it wasn't fair to me and it wasn't fair to the Lord and it wasn't fair to the other people around me and I'm so embarrassed that that was the person that I was becoming but at the same time I was so far in to it that I couldn't It was like I couldn't pull myself back out, which, of course, I can't pull myself out, right? That's where I was failing, was trying to pull myself out instead of actually leaning on the Lord. Saying I was leaning on the Lord and actually leaning on the Lord are two different things. I was saying it with my mouth, but my heart and my mind were not there. Um, And when I talk about sin, I'm not talking about sin as in, like, I wasn't cheating on my husband or any of that crazy. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. The struggle wasn't that. What the struggle was, was not not putting away the flesh. I was so, I was in a season and a spirit of, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of fighting for good. I'm tired of fighting for righteousness. I'm tired of always being what felt like always having to be doing the right thing. I was so sick of what felt like cowarding down to do the right thing. I I wasn't willing to do it anymore. I felt like I was backed into a corner. I'm sick of being nice. I'm sick of trying to be kind. I'm sick of trying to, honestly, sick of trying to do it the Lord's way because ultimately kindness and goodness come from him. But 
I wasn't actually doing it the Lord's way. I was still doing it. I was operating in my flesh, trying to get good results, trying to get godly results. And because of that, things were failing miserably. And so because I was having failure, because I wasn't trying, because I was like, you know what? I give up. I'm not going to be nice anymore. If I want to have a nasty attitude, if I want to, you know, go off on my husband, if I want to go off on my kids, I don't want to be told I'm wrong. I'm sick of being told I'm wrong. I have to be right. Somewhere I have to be right. And that way of thinking brought shame. It brought misery. It brought insecurity because I was just trying to self-soothe. I was telling myself that I can't be wrong when the Bible clearly says <laughs> that there are none good, that the intentions of our heart are exceedingly wicked, right? Like the desires that I was trying to carry out were my own fleshly desires. And I wasn't actually seeking the Lord. I wasn't actually asking him, what do you need from me? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to operate with this or that? I was like, you know what? I know enough. I'm I'm going to church on Sundays. I'm I'm listening to a sermon now and again. I'm I'm doing my little bit of prayer. That's enough. That should sustain me. That wasn't sustaining me. Little by little, I had stopped reading the word consistently I was just like "Mm, I'll pick it up when I can I'll get it in when I can I'm doing the best I can and of course there is still more that can be done or more that should be done right but my prayer life it wasn't a real prayer life it was "Mm, I'll pray when I eat I'll pray before I fall asleep I'll pray while I'm falling asleep I'll do the bare minimum and call it the maximum, but expect exceeding results. And that's the thing too. I think that I, I was, I have had such an expectation that is unrealistic, unbiblical, honestly. I didn't want to suffer anymore. I was done suffering. I'm sick of suffering. But then I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to admit that to the Lord. I didn't want to say or call it suffering. Because to me, in my head, because of the way I was raised, suffering is, I'm losing a leg. I'm losing an arm. You know what I mean? Like, suffering is suffering. But suffering, what the Lord is teaching me, is it does look like just warfare, you know, just not having the desire to read my word. Suffering is in fact losing my life. And I don't mean like losing my life as in a sacrificial way. I'm saying like just dying, not dying to self to put on cross, but just dying. I wasn't feeding the spirit. I wasn't doing any I was literally coming to the table hungry looking at the plate of food and not taking a bite but expecting the nutrients to be there because at least I came but the thing of it is is I wasn't willing to pick up the fork and put it to my mouth and then chew and then swallow because I was too afraid of what if it what if it's bitter? What if it doesn't taste good? My I was so fearful of having to work that I stopped praying. Because mm-hmm. then if I stopped praying, then whatever came my way, I couldn't say it's because I prayed for it. Because I didn't want to suffer anymore. And so I thought the absence of suffer or ignoring the problems would in fact 
lead me to victory. But ignoring it doesn't make it gone. And so now the place that I'm in, now the area where I feel like the Lord is walking me through is saying, you're going to suffer. I know these things, right? I know these basic things. It's in scripture. I've read it a million times, but I wasn't listening. You can look at something, you can hear something and not listen. And that's where I was at. I was unwilling to listen. I was unwilling to give my heart to the Lord. In the beginning, when walking with him, it felt so easy. And so in a lot of ways, I had made an idol out of my own walk, my own past, because, well, it was easier then. It was easy to love you. It was easy not to have to work so hard. It just came effortlessly, it felt like, in the beginning. Of course, there were trials. Of course, there were things that I was like, oh, goodness, this is what being a Christian's like. I don't know about this. But at the same time, it was, it was easier. At least it felt easier because I was excited. I was, this was all new and fresh and I had joy and I had peace. Now what I feel like the Lord was showing me and is showing me is you didn't have, you don't have peace right now. You don't have rest in me. You're not resting in me. You're closing your eyes, but you're not, you're not resting. You're doing all of these works, but none of them are for me. You didn't ask me. You didn't come to me. You didn't seek me. You assumed that this would be enough. You assumed that you reading a little bit now and again was going to suffice when you know that you've been walking this long with me. You've done this too many years to know that's not going to be enough. Yesterday's problem Yesterday's scripture isn't going to be enough. Yesterday's food isn't enough to sustain you today. You need more. You need me. And I'll be honest, I don't, I only know that the Lord is the one who got, who is continuing and who is getting a hold of my heart. And as embarrassing as it is to be seven years in and to still struggle, I'm not, I'm not, I, I was, but I'm okay with knowing that my teacher is my heavenly father and that he is continuing to help me learn and grow and thrive and strive that he is patient enough to not give up, that he's patient enough to keep pursuing me, despite my efforts, despite my daily challenges, despite my aggravations, despite all of me, he's continuing to use me and say, you know what, I'll teach you again, child. I don't mind because I want you to learn. I want you to understand. I want you to know me and that's okay with me. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with suffering. Even though I don't want to. My hope is that you don't give up. That you don't see your struggling. That you don't let the enemy feed you the lies of saying, my goodness, really? Do you even know the Lord? Do you even know him? He has to keep telling you over and over and over again. You're right. He does. But you know what? He's patient and he's loving and he loves you enough. He loves me enough to keep teaching. More than that, he loves his son completely and wholly enough to give us that opportunity to continue to learn. As long as you have breath in your lungs, it isn't too late. Don't give up. Don't let the enemy feed you the lie that it's too late, that you cannot start again. 
because with the Lord, it's not starting over. See, you don't have to watch season one to know what's going on in season five. The Lord is the author and perfecter of time. Time is not an issue with him. So because of that, he can propel you. He can in, he can push you forward. And in all of that, there is no time actually wasted. The Lord doesn't waste anything. He's not wasting because you and I took a break or that we didn't do this or that. There's always a time to be taught. There's always a moment, a lesson to be learned. And that is what he's teaching me right now. There's no time with him. So whether I stop or start or whatever, his glory is still going to be there. He's still going to be glorified. Now, do I want to be obedient? Do I want to do the things that I feel that he has called me to do? Uh, Absolutely, yes. But he doesn't need me in order to do all of those things. But he will use me. And that is what I'm grateful for. And that's what I want to encourage you in. Don't stop doing what you are called to do based on the fact that you took a break or you didn't, you haven't finished it or whatever. Pick it back up. Pick it back up. If the Lord's called you to it and he's in it, it will succeed. Pick it back up. Don't let the enemy put into your brain that God doesn't want you to do it. Or maybe I shouldn't or whatever, or this is embarrassing or it's going to be embarrassing. It's going to take humility. It's going to take striving. It's going to take work. But is it worth it? And I would say a resounding yes. It's worth it. I think my walk with him, despite how I would like for it to play out versus how it is playing out, is what's best for me. I can't always see it. You're not always going to see it in the moment. We might not even ever see it until we meet eternity, but it'll all be worth it. Anyhow, that is what has been going on in my life. The Lord just walking me through and reminding me that I called you to do really weird and hard things, but it's going to be all worth it. I have peace in it. I have peace in making this video. I have peace in saying these things and I have peace in repeating myself because I think (laughs) we think it needs to be said one time. And here's the thing. The gospel is daily. The gospel is hourly. The gospel is minute to minute. And we need to hear it and we need to be reminded all the time. And yeah, this person, that person has probably said it way better than me. But I have to do what the Lord's called me to do. I have to say it from my mouth. But for now, I am back. I'm praying and hoping that it is consistency for real. I plan to start back up all my series. Um, I plan to do a whole bunch of stuff. I plan to just do whatever I feel that the Lord has called me to do. And I'm just hoping and praying that it goes off with a bang. And listen, as quick as I am to say that I am going to be back and at it, the enemy is going to try to keep me away. And I have just got to resist him and remember whose I really am and really seek the Lord and do the really hard things. Do the things that I don't want to do. Pick up the camera when I don't want to pick up the camera. Pick up and just be obedient. Trust and obey because there's no other way. All right, y'all, I am going to close this episode out and I just want to thank y'all once again for being patient with me, for watching my content, for just loving the Lord and loving me. And I just pray that you are encouraged. I pray that you 
will do the hard thing and that you, whatever that looks like, whatever your heart is, I pray that you'll do that. So I will catch y'all in the next episode, hopefully. (laughs) And until next time, God bless y'all and go and be a light out there. If you enjoyed this episode of Blemish, then please consider subscribing to my channel by hitting this button right here. If you would like to watch another episode of Blemished, then you can click the playlist right here.